All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll uh, welcome you this evening. We'll call this meeting to order. This is our recess meeting of Tuesday, March 17th of 2020. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation by Chaplain Sam Bonner of the New Prairie Grove Church, and then by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, one nation, God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, and liberty and justice, justice for all. Justice for all. everyone we, we appreciate you being here um, and observing some social distancing here so um, first thing we have as an item on the agenda for action is and, and just as an FYI we have one uh, alderman who is going to be who is here but not here He's, he is on the telephone so we will be uh, asking for a roll call vote on everything in order to acknowledge his his vote. So um, the first thing we do is ask for an uh, approval of the official agenda with consented items. Do we have any changes to the agenda? There is one item that was not in originally in your pop packet. It is currently under parks. It's number four, which is rejection of bids associated with the Jail King Park and the Patriots Park restroom facilities. That item is in, is in front of you. Um, other than that, we don't have, um, I don't think we have anything that was not originally in the packet from Friday. So do I have anyone who wishes to make any changes to the consent agenda or to the official agenda? Alderman Little. Under uh, engineering, add item one to consent. Under engineering. Okay. Let's get, uh, that will be um, page four, and that is the consideration of authorizing mm -hmm. advertisement for proposals of the 2020 herbicide spraying services. Do I have any objections to putting that item on consent? Alderman Walker, any objection? It's fine. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing seeing none, I will put, add that one to the consent agenda. Do we and have any other items? And if you don't have an objection on the mayor's business item B, if you, if you want to tell what that's... What I will, that's I will read do. that, actually. Um, okay. And I will do that as a part of... Uh, I'm going to do some mayor's comments. So I will read that as a part of that, okay. if that, if that works. And uh, do we have any objection to putting the consideration of the proclamation of existence of a local emergency on consent? Mayor, I don't yes, have sir. an objection, but I think it's very... Um, and come upon um, you, as you mentioned to the general from three, just to, um, if we do put on consent for you to articulate it and just uh, reveal to the press and to the uh, media exactly all the details of it. Yes, sir. I will, I will be happy to do that and I will, uh, I will read it and in its entirety and then we will we'll put it on consent and I will mention exactly what it does uh, in favor of the city. So I'll show that one on consent as well. Anyone, anyone else, anything else? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the official agenda with the consented items as amended? So moved, Mayor. I have a motion from Alderman Little. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Beatty. Further discussion? Okay, seeing none, if you would answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrom. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right. It is unanimous. Motion carries. And from this, I will read those consented items. Um, first one is consideration of the minutes of the February 28th, 2020 work session of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville. Under Mayor's business, recently added to the, to the consent agenda is consideration of the proclamation of existence of a local emergency. Under um, Board business, we have item B, which is consideration of authorization to advertise to fill three vacancies, award three vacancy for the Planning and Zoning Commission, a Historic Preservation Commission vacancy, and a vacancy for the Library Board of Trustees. Under the airport, we have a request approval to advertise for leasing airport tillable land located south and west of the runway and taxiway and inside the fenced area for one year 
from farmland uh, for farmland at George M. Bryan Field. Under engineering, we have item one, which is consideration of authorizing the advertisement for proposals for the 2020 herbicide spraying services. Number two is consideration of declaring the 1994 Ford F-150 XL VIN number 1FTDF15YZRNA08538 as surplus and auction on gov deals and authorization to purchase a Ford F a Ford three-quarter ton crew cab pickup truck off state contract as a replacement. Under finance administration, item two is request acceptance of the February financial statements. G, Human Resources, a request authorization to hire Maurice Johnson, Wesley Cohen, David Lewis, and Stephen Mercer as reserve police officers in the Startwell Police Department. Number two is request authorization to hire Eli Barksdale and Cameron Bell as entry-level police officers in the Startwell Police Department, and authorization to hire Scotty Montgomery as a certified police officer, and Michael McClendon as full-time temporary entry-level police officer in the Startwell Police Department. Number three is request authorization to transfer Noah Brandon from the Startwell Engineering Department as an intern to the Startwell Utilities Department as an intern. Number four is request authorization to advertise for four seasonal maintenance workers in the Startwell Parks and Recreation Department. <coughs> Number five is request authorization to hire Gretchen Reeves as a sports coordinator in the Parks and Recreation Department. H is information technology request approval for the lowest quote of $29,787.92 for camera software and video storage from Convergent Technologies. Under parks, consideration of an agreement with security solutions for an alarm system and fire alarm monitoring at Travis Outlaw Center, Sportsplex concessions and McKee concessions. Under police department, uh, excuse me, request approval to purchase power DMS for policy and procedure and training management software as sole compatible software with existing equipment at a cost of $5,656.38. <laughs> Item two is consideration to allow Corporal Stratton Woods to attend Tactical Officer Survival School in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, March 31st through April 1st, 2020, at a total cost of $480. And number three is consideration of the purchase from the lowest and best quote for forensic measuring, surveying, recording, diagramming equipment from Trimble and vendor NEI GPS for a total of $15,021 from that fiscal year 20 JAG hotspot grant. Under utilities, item one is request authorization for Startwell Utilities to enter into professional services agreement with narrative 12 with focus on the planning and execution of the SU that we start with utilities, social media platforms with a budget of $1,500 per month and $2,500 for a comprehensive package of communication services. Number two is request authorization for start with utilities to accept the best and lowest quote for a new MyTel phone system from, it, from Synergetics for $39,133. And that concludes the consent agenda items. Thank you, Mayor. It is my pleasure. Thank you. All right. The, under the next item for board business, we normally have announcements and comments. And under this, we have mayor's comments and we have board comments. And I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, bring the board and our Facebook audience and, and the press up to date on the things that have transpired. We have had an amazing few days, an amazing few weeks of what has been going on as it relates to the corona COVID-19 virus that is a, has been declared a pandemic and about which we have uh, created this or, or adopted this proclamation. And from that, uh, I have taken some steps that I am uh, going to, that I have already shared, certainly shared with the board already that I want to share as a part of this uh, board meeting. So it will be uh, provided to the Facebook audience and to the, um, the press who are sitting here covering us as they always do, which we greatly appreciate. Um, and I will start with um, basically giving an idea of the, of the proclamation so that uh, I can read that and I will read it in its entirety. It is, it is something that was adopted by the Board of Supervisors last night at their meeting and it is, uh, it is provided to us um, by the uh, Emergency Management Director, uh, Kristen Campanella, who has been extraordinary in her diligence in keeping us abreast of what's going on. So I want to give a shout out to her. <coughs> Uh, in her um, uh, constant con communication in letting us know from her perspective what we can do 
to best protect the city as we go through this. So the proclamation reads as, as this. Whereas the City of Starkville Mayor and Board of Aldermen do hereby find that conditions of extreme peril to the safety of, pers of persons and property have arisen within the City of Starkville caused by infectious disease pandemic COVID-19 commencing on March 17, 2020. And whereas the United States Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar declared a public health emergency for COVID-19 beginning on January 27, 2020. On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization publicly characterized COVID-19 as a pandemic. And on March 13, 2020, the President of the United States declared a nationwide state of emergency due to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the aforesaid conditions of extreme peril warrant and necessitate the proclamation of the existence of a local emergency in order to provide for the health and safety of the citizens and the protection of their property within the affected jurisdiction, now, therefore, it is hereby proclaimed that in accordance with Section 33-15-17 sub D, the Mississippi Code of 1972, as amended, a local emergency now exists throughout the city of Startwell and Octavile County and shall be reviewed every 30 days until such local emergency is no longer in effect and proclaimed terminated by the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Startwell, Octavile County, State of Mississippi. It is further proclaimed and ordered that all City of Startwell agencies and departments shall render all possible assistance and discharge their emergency responsibilities as set, as set forth in the Octavile County Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan. And that, that is, as it reads in its, entire, in its entirety, it is obviously a fairly general um, statement, but that is the proclamation that the Board has now approved uh, via the consent agenda. Um, and from, from that, there is also an, an interesting um, element of statutory authority that a Board of Aldermen, a, a municipality governing authorities has, and it is uh, the statutory authority provided by the state of 21-19-3, which is, interestingly enough, controlling contagious or infectious diseases establishing pest houses. And I personally had never heard of a pest house, but anyway, it is in the statute. It's a universal citation. And it reads that the governing authorities of municipalities shall have the power to make regulations to prevent the introduction and spread of contagious or infectious diseases, to make quarantine laws for that purpose, and to enforce the same within five miles of the corporate limits, and to establish pest houses outside the corporate limits, and to provide for the support and government of the same. And that is me reading that also in its entirety. So there are several statutory things that come into play that the board has at its disposal to make decisions with the board meeting that we were having tonight and the changing status of all that has been going on over the past uh, week or so, which has actually been changing pretty much hourly. Um, we have gone from uh, 250 people recommended in a room to uh, 50 people recommended in a room to no more than 10 recommended in a room. And so with all of that, we have been trying to find a place where it makes sense for the city to adopt a position. And with all the changes that occurred yesterday, I met with the department heads, and through that meeting, we discussed all of the city's response and how we would handle that. Um, and that was, at that time, to say that we would be open for business, but we would be very um, cognizant of the social distancing, which at that time was recommended to be six feet. And that was in the morning, last morning, yesterday morning at 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, 9 o'clock. And as we went through the day, it became obvious that things had become much more um, heightened. And so as such, um, yesterday afternoon, I let the Board of Aldermen know and the department heads know that we were going to go to essential staffing starting this morning, and the, being, that being the 17th today. And having done that, what we did was we determined that we were going to be somewhere between a vacation which may, or not a vacation, but a holiday, in which everybody was off except the usual fire and police, and a normal working day, which put us um, somewhere in the neighborhood of um, keeping people from coming into, randomly coming into City Hall, for example, or into the Startville Utilities Department um, to conduct business that was not critical business. So what we have done and what I have, have set forward for the board and what I am recommending that the board um, approve and work with me on is maintaining that essential staffing, which again, somewhere between holiday and normal operations, um, that will go on for the next three weeks, essentially, until we come to our next board meeting, which would be April the 7th. Obviously, if there is something more dramatic that happens between now and then, we can certainly have a special call board meeting and revisit this issue. 
We, as of right now, do not have any reported cases in Octavia County. Um, that is not to say we will not have them, but my expectation is that with all the things that we are, we are putting in place and all the cognizance that our businesses and our um, uh, various citizens have expressed in, in mediums of both Facebook, Nextdoor, um, Twitter, that everyone is very, very aware and that they are exercising caution and they're being judicious in how they're doing it. And I'm going to cover a little bit of that. But essentially going back to what the city is doing, uh, the electric department, for example, is not having people come into the lobby. Uh, they're making payments through the drive through they're making payments at kiosk. We are encouraging them to go online. And those that are unable to, we have a phone number that we can then accommodate them on a much, on a very individualized basis with that as an option for us to handle um, any questions that come up. Um, we have begun the protocol of having gloves in areas where people handle uh, money and who might be coming in contact with surfaces. Um, uh, we have ramped up our ability to answer phone calls to make sure we are accessible. Um, even more so than we normally are. The effort is to make sure that we are functioning. Um, our sanitation department, for example, is not going to be necessarily open for walk-in traffic, but we are going to answer the phone and be available to answer questions if someone wants to come pick up, for example, a recycling bin, uh, we will take it to them. So it's, it's that kind of extra effort. We have people who are telecommuting, they are working from home and they are accessible from home. Um, also paying very close attention to their, uh, their cell phones to make them available to us as we need them. We have the beauty of having a very robust ability to have plans for like the community development department. Um, our city planners can look at those plans online. Our engineering department can look at those plans online. Our uh, building inspectors can look at those plans. They can also come into the building but not necessarily have foot traffic associated with it. If there are inspections that need to be made, we can communicate with them and they can go out and be, very, being again, very mindful of the social distancing aspect. They can make those inspections as needed. We do not wish to shut our uh, opportunities for our businesses to thrive down, but we want to be cognizant of ways to keep our personnel, our staff, our citizens, um, our business people all safe. So that is part of that effort to maintain some normalcy of operation, but still be mindful of how we can uh, flatten the bell curve, as it were, that seems to be the expression of the day of keeping that the uh, chances of having an overwhelming number of people in the hospital at the same time uh, dampened as best we can by being aware of that. So having said that, the other item that we're going to, that I have uh, instituted and asked the board to support very strongly is going to one day trash pickup. And why I say one day, I mean one day a week. We right now have two day a week trash pickup. We have Mondays and Thursdays. We have a Monday and Thursday route. We have a Tuesday and Friday route. And then we have recycling pickup on Wednesday. We had our normal pickup yesterday. We had our normal pickup today. We have a uh, schedule for the recycling to go tomorrow, but starting Thursday, Friday, and and henceforth until we revisit this if we need to, uh, I am requesting that the board uh, support the idea of going to one day a week pickup per route so that we can uh, utilize our assets and not keep our, uh, our trucks, our personnel out in, in the community in ways that put them at some, at some degree of risk. And so I assume that our um, citizenry will be willing to understand that accommodation. I feel sure, based on all I've read, that everyone is very understanding of what we're having to deal with and what we're having to go through. So that is one of those items. The other thing about recycling is that we will ask that instead of us picking it up every Wednesday, that if you want to bring it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you certainly may do so and drop it off at the location that is located at the sanitation department, which is on D.L. Connor where the street department, the sanitation department, and the water department have their current headquarters. So having said that, the other element that I want to highlight is that the police chief has looked at his protocols associated with his contact with the public. Obviously, our police department and our fire department have regular contact, uh, and the ambulance service have regular contact with the public. They have looked at their protocol. They have discussed the issues with their personnel, and we are instituting additional elements of gloves and that kind of uh, activity or that kind of approach to make sure that we protect both our employees and the citizens with whom they come in contact. So we are also very cognizant of that. And I don't, uh, I, I don't have exactly, I mean, I know there is some, uh, like fingerprinting we normally do. I think we have 
curtail that to the extent that unless it's some, some sort of emergency or some sort of fingerprinting necessary for some other reason, that uh, we're not doing that just as a, as a random uh, courtesy, which we have done in the past. Um, the Parks and Rec Department has closed. We've closed the Outlaw Center. Um, we have uh, shut down all activities associated with that. I know that the um, games, the sports have been canceled out in MSU altogether. NCAA, I think, announced all cancellation of sports for the spring. Um, we have, I think, continued to take some, uh, the draft that we did, but I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to have any sports activities this spring, but we have not totally foreclosed that. So if something happens and we're able to do so, then we have some team drafting that we've done and we could resume it. Um, we have not gone any further than that. I know that we have had people who have been out in, in the parks who have been enjoying the weather, which is, you know, we've had a beautiful day. Um, and I would ask them to understand that if it is a, a very crowded area that as citizens we anticipate the difficulty associated with that and, and maintain that safe distance that is being recommended, which is, has gone from six feet to now 10 feet. So um, please, parents who want to get their children out, uh, people who want to go out, um, please consider that as you do that because we are, I don't think, in a position where we can monitor and police every, every park for every moment of the day. So please exercise that kind of level of caution and I'm going to ask the board as, as we deal with our, our uh, representative constituents in each ward that we communicate with them through either our next door, our Facebook, our Twitter, all of those things that encourage that social interaction uh, and that it be limited in ways that we are being uh, recommended by those who have a much better handle on the um, medical aspect of this with, with the 10 feet as being a, a part of that. Um, we have uh, established I, and I authorize this and it has been implemented that we have established um, to-go signage in our downtown area and in our areas where our restaurants have um, gone to voluntarily gone to trying to meet that need of keeping people out of their dining rooms by having pickup opportunities for meals and so we took our signs, our city signage, and we have put signs in areas that are public normally public parking spaces downtown uh, in front of uh, and around Moe's, for example, uh, 929, across the way at Pita Pit, down at uh, Repa's in the Startwell Cafe, uh, down at Ben 612, and in those areas that are, that are dependent on uh, public spaces for people to park in for them to come in. So this allows them to still be hopefully functioning in a to-go and a take-out atmosphere that will give them some relief, which this is going to be extremely difficult on all our businesses and, and extremely hard on our restaurants who clearly have been uh, some of our lifeblood for what we do and what we enjoy in the city of Starkville. So they have voluntarily done a number of that. We've had a number of closings in town. Dave's Dark Horse has voluntarily closed. Um, I know that uh, Ben 612 has uh, closed for any late night activities. Again, they are trying to do their lunch hour, as are any number of others. And I am hopeful that all of our restaurants will uh, recognize this and continue to monitor their crowds and keep them at a reasonable and sort of 10, you know, 10 foot kind of level. Um, and what I'm hoping, and if you look around you, um, we have limited our audience here. If we have people who leave, we can have people who come in. We've encouraged people to go to Facebook streaming to watch us so that we can keep that audience level at an area or at a, a distance that is meeting that, requ that requested or that recommended distance of 10 feet. So I am uh, asking that the restaurants, strongly asking that the restaurants exercise that same kind of um, approach to their space in their area that they go to a, a 10 foot or at least a minimum of 10, 10 people in their dining in facilities. Um, I am not at a point, I personally am not at a point where I'm comfortable shutting restaurants down. Um, I think that there are other cities that are going through that and this board can certainly have that as a point of discussion for them but I, I feel uh, in all candor that shutting the restaurants down is um, singling them out in a way that is not necessarily representative and fair for other retail businesses. So what I am suggesting that we do is strongly recommend to them that the number inside a confined space be no more than 10. 
and that would be true of a restaurant, that would be true of a, of a dress shop, that would be true of an auto parts dealer, um, any of our retail stores. And you know how they wish to control their private business is theirs, despite the fact that we, we do probably have that, or the board certainly has that authority at 21-19-3. So um, that is one of those points of discussion, and, and I want to be clear that other, other cities are doing that. I think our restaurants have been very, very uh, responsible and responsive. They have uh, gone to that takeout. They are focusing on doing takeout. And I think that um, allowing them to continue to function if they continue to be responsible about that is not an unreasonable thing. But again, that can be discussion by the board if they so wish. Uh, we currently have no cases of uh, the virus reported in Octobaha County. And uh, I am saying that we will revisit this, if not, um, on April the 7th than before because something else may have transpired between now and then. And uh, that is three weeks away. This is going to be one of our normal broader breaks between our normal board meetings, which normally come every two weeks. This is one of those longer months. So we will be meeting again on April the 7th. So that will give three weeks for us to uh, evaluate our essential personnel structure and how we are managing our normal and uh, normal operations as best we can. Our mission being to serve the public, and that will allow us to see what go what transpires between now and then over this time frame. And there may be a mandate that comes out that we will be required to do that. And if so, we certainly will follow any mandate coming from either the president or the governor. But as it stands right now, that is that is where I am suggesting that this board go. And if anyone has anything further, they are certainly welcome to add it. And if I've forgotten something, you're also welcome to do that. Um, oh, and I will say this, from a utility standpoint, I know we have a water leak, for example, on University Drive. It right now is a fairly small leak. We are monitoring any and all of those, and unless we have a major leak, which we will get out to fix, we are currently using um, our emergency personnel like we would on a weekend for, to come out for those kinds of things, including uh, street department, water department, sewer department. Those, those will respond, but only to circumstances that require that as we are, again, trying to go to the more essential services. So that's sort of the end of my spiel. Um, I, I think that we clearly have a, have a position in Startwell that we will make it through this with no um, permanent damage. I think we will be thinking about what we do. I, I did get um, uh, an emergency pamphlet for from another community. I'll give, her, I'll give them credit. Oxford drafted one, which I, I, as a thief that I am, I took it and I sent it out to our department heads and said, you know, this is a great idea. Let's look at it and, and relate it to Startville and create something that we can uh, bring to the board and adopt as a policy so that uh, we will be in a position to address this when this comes around again. Hopefully we will not have that happen again, but if we do, this will be something that uh, we can look at and, and present and then respond accordingly in a very prepared and deliberate way. So having said that, I will stop my statements and ask for any board comments if they wish to make some. All right, here, I'll, I will go. Yeah, I didn't hear you say anything about health and fitness clubs. What, what about they should, they should do the same thing that we're doing, no more than 10 or 15, you know, something in there? What yes, any, I, I believe any retail establishment should be looking at that. Uh, gyms, fitness clubs, any establishment that is a congregate, uh, congregations, your churches. I don't know what churches are doing, but I, I think that's one of those things that uh, any area that is confined space that, that brings in a, a good number of people need to be looking at it, if nothing else, drafting that space, arranging for that space, and, and encouraging the, the congregations, the fitness clubs, whoever, to ensure that those distances are um, encouraged and managed. Thank you. Alderman Sistron? I, I would like to say that I, th I think our community has really stepped up their game in, in responding to this. They are taking the kinds of precautions that we've all been encouraged to take, washing hands vigorously, practicing that social distancing, being mindful and kind to those people who um, might be more susceptible to the disease and, and allowing them to um, have the opportunity to, to, to receive some assistance. Um, I think it's imperative that we all recognize that we cannot prevent this. We cannot. The, the most that we can hope to do is to flatten that curve so that our health care facilities are not overwhelmed. And I, I think our hospitals very prepared. They're, they're uh, implementing some things that are going to make testing uh, better, um, easier, 
um, less interactive with the general public. Um, I appreciate very much our businesses that have um, voluntarily restricted their hours, um, those that are being proactive in managing the number of people that are in their businesses at one, any one time, that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm like the mayor, not at that point of saying that we need to use um, every tool in our toolkit to, to close things down and quarantine things. We do need to monitor it and be, be reactive um, as, as information becomes available that says that we need to be doing more than what we're currently doing. I, I have a question, and this is a dotting your I's, crossing your T's kind of question for the city attorney and probably for uh, Vice Mayor Perkins if he would perk up and listen here. Uh, well, let me say, I heard every word you said. I, I have not missed a single word well, tonight. I particularly want you to hear these next ones. Um, we have gone to essential staffing only, and we're going to continue to pay our employees on um, an administrative leave with pay basis. I have a feeling that in the world of emergency management and potential reimbursement down the line, that that phrase is very important. I'm not sure that our um, personnel manual specifically spells this out because I don't know that we've ever dealt with anything like that before. So do we tonight need to, as a board, recognize that that we are paying our, our, our all of our employees on an administrative leave with pay for those that are not at their desk at their normal workplace. You want to start off? You want me to, Vice Mayor? Uh, well, I'll start off if you want me to. If you want to just hear what I have to say as a board member, I would take the more conservative approach. Attorney, um, the um, formal government under which we operate, being uh, the code charter, and we are the legislative body. I think there needs to be some clear measure on our books. So when um, it is looked at by the state auditor's office, they know that we, as we always say, that we speak through our minutes. I think that would be good and very prudent practice for that to be articulated on our minutes. And therefore, if we ever have to face any judicial or auditing challenge or scrutiny, then you'll be able to successfully defend us in court. I, I completely agree on that. Well, well, and can I weigh in just real quickly? One of the, the things that the governor did in his proclamation was talk about administrative leave for, with pay for state and local employees. And so that was one of those things that I think, uh, and I do want the board to, to weigh in, obviously, and, and, and take an action. But I, I do think that that, under the governor's edict, that that falls under that. So we do not have anything in our personnel manual that directs that at this point in time. Yeah, I might recognize. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And, and the governor's um, proclamation does say that, but it still um, indicates and reflects that in light of our acting commensurate with his directives, you know, it just covers us legally. I mean, if, if Mr. Latterman uh, has to go to court, all he has to do is get this set of approved minutes and it shows we acted what the, in accordance with what the governor said. We never lose in that instance. So we're all on the same page. We just want to make sure we're legally correct. And we're all saying the same thing. You know, we're all in agreement. But as the, um, the older woman from, um, from Ward 2, my esteemed colleague from 2, indicated we, we're, we will always win on you know, any challenge. Yes, sir. Alderman, sister, anything else? Could, could, um, could our city attorney draft a quick motion that would cover that and, and we could amend the agenda to add that to the board business. Yeah, I'll be working or even, on that. Or even put it on, con well, it's too late for consent. Yeah. Um, let, let me work on that. We all continue other discussions and then I'll let you know when it's ready and we can bring it up. Okay. Okay. Anyone and have any? I, I do have one other thing. Okay. I, I know that um, the traditional media, the, the newspapers, television, all that sort of thing, will be uh, covering this and we'll talk about um, the changes that are being made, particularly in the sanitation department, um, and, and we will blast it out there with social media too. Despite our very best efforts to get this communicated everywhere, not everybody will pick up on this. So if you, if you, would, um, um, if you are aware of it, would you help spread the word? And to the extent that the um, utilities department has 
email addresses for um, customers, both both sanitation and um, recycling, if we could send out an email. And I know that you're going to get a lot that come back as not being a current um, email address for customers. But um, just whatever we can do to, to communicate that, because there will be people who just didn't hear it. Yes, ma'am. Thank no. you. Okay. Anyone else? Mayor. Mayor. Alderman. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Alderman Walker, hang on just a second. I'll go to Alderman Beatty and I'll then to you. Alderman Walker. Oh, okay. Alderman Beatty's deferring to you, Alderman Walker. Go right ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm in total agreement with uh, the one day a week traffic pickup per route, but I don't, I haven't heard uh, which day of the week for each route will be picked up. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to be clear. Uh, we will be picking up on Mondays. For the Monday Thursday and on Tuesdays for the Tuesday Friday thank you yes sir I'm sorry about that I should have been better uh, all, well let me go to Alderman Beatty Alderman Beatty what is a pest house I do not know <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up a definition in the state yeah, I'll have to look that up too I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> sounds like an well, old counsel. old phrase you know I have not seen a statutory definition attorney and gentleman from five but it, it you know it refers to Pest house. I just take the word literally, but I, I had never used, uh, come across that that terminology. But it all pertains to infectious diseases and control. So clearly, that the statute. I think the relevant thing here is is, is the statute itself. Right. Now, it so may that, be a quarantine house. Right, but yeah. but the statute you got in, in follow to the general five. That serves on point. Okay. Anything further, Alderman Beatty? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Anyone else, Alderman Carver? I'm sorry, Alderman Little. You asked first. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I had a quick question as far as what day rubbish will be picked up. Right now, I'm already starting to see a lot of tree limbs out trimming, and with people off work, uh, the way it's looking the next few weeks, that uh, there's going to be a lot more You're spring correct. trimmings and cleaning. And we normally mm -hmm. pick up rubbish on the day on the first day of pickup, so I would suggest okay. that, that Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. And if we need to modify that, we can we can do it. But um, if we find that we're overwhelmed, for example, okay. we can do that. But for for now, I would say Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. And when we normally pick up a route. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alderman Carver. I was going to say, yeah, the only, I agree with everything you said, maybe other than the one day of trash pickup and just basically, essentially, you know, you're doubling the amount of trash generated per household. Is this just from decreasing the risk of infectious disease or is this, you know, exposure to our workers? Because, I mean, obviously, and I tell the public this, not everybody's going to hear that. And uh, secondly, you know, if it becomes unsanitary or unsafe in your house, if you're just generating uh, too much, trash at your house I think I know the city will do whatever they can to come out and pick up on those extreme extreme instances but is this just for us to protect are we cutting down the number of sanitation workers no no we're, we're rotating them which just is rotating. which is part of what we're trying to do is we've what we've got is we've gone to uh, the essential staff we have people who we intend to rotate so that not everyone is always working on administrative leave you know you, you rotate your people through okay. so that we can um, allow some of those folks who would normally be working all the time to to have some time off it's it's a matter of you know utilizing our assets as best we can so that's that's sort of the thought behind it is uh, keeping them from being exposed as they would be to any of those kinds of I mean picking up trash is not the cleanest you know it's not the cleanest right. job so we have gloves and we have we have coverings and that sort of thing, but in order to minimize it, then it strikes me that that would be a prudent thing to do. So, Alderman Sister? Can, can I take an, an educational moment for everyone? Um, a pest house, plague house, uh, pest house or fever shed was a type of building used for persons afflicted with communicable diseases such as tuberculosis, cholera, smallpox, or typhus. And I suppose now we could add COVID-19. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank Wikipedia you. to the rescue. Yes. <laughs> All right. Any, anyone else? Any other comments? No, sir. I did a little research before the meeting. The same thing. And there's still seven or eight left in, in, in London. And so this is basically a forced quarantine within a pest house mm -hmm. that you would take uh, infected individuals and, and house them. Probably like a leper's right. colony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe Alderman, I mean, I'm sorry, I believe Attorney Latimer has a motion. Um, would you like to pass it to Alderman Sistrunk or do you want to read it for her? Let me read it since it's in my chicken scratch and we can certainly amend this language if need be. Uh, but what I wrote down is move that all city staff on administrative leave pursuant to the governor's proclamation and declared state of emergency 
related to the COVID-19 coronavirus be paid their respective wages in full during the duration of the declared state of emergency. Um, Would you do it one can more time? We, okay, can we, I'm suggesting we revisit that um, April on April 7th. the 7th. So um, that way it's not, a, it's not a blanket if things change, if we need to do something differently in order to meet our obligations. Um, that we change that to April the 7th. Can you might recognize? Vice Mayor. Uh, gentlemen, uh, the honorable uh, colleague, um, in what Mayor just said about we revisit uh, this on, on uh, April the 7th, you also can make an inclusive language that this measure will stay in full force and effect until a uh, further order of this board. And therefore, Mayor, that will cover will. what your concerns and the rest of our orders. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Perfect. Thank Mayor, you. Thank you. And if you would read it one more time for all the sisters, and I'll pay close attention this time. Okay. Madam, all in perfect section. All right, move that all city staff on administrative leave pursuant to the governor's proclamation and declared state of emergency related to COVID-19, the coronavirus, be paid their respective wages <clears throat> in full to be revisited during the board's regular meeting on April 7th. Otherwise, this measure will stay in effect, in full force in effect, until further board order. Is that acceptable? All right, do you want to make that motion, Alderman Sister? So moved. Okay, do I have a second? Sir. I have a second from Alderman Beatty. Further discussion? All right, hearing none, uh, all those, uh, I'm sorry, um, please answer yay or nay when the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, by a vote of seven, it is unanimous. The uh, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Um, now, any any other <laughs> any other board comments other than what we've discussed? Alderman Carver. You know, that last motion, I just want to say at, at times, you know, we, we've talked maybe about pay scale disparity between private sector and public sector, but that's a testament. Uh, what this board and mayor just passed is uh, something that uh, we, we do value our city workers. We value what they do. Um, we've always, I've always thought it was one of the best uh, health insurance packages there, there is in the state of Mississippi and then also a great place to work, but that's something they can take with stability and they can go home and know that uh, at the time they will be off that they can take care of their family and have a job waiting for them when they get back so thank you for highlighting motion. that thank you anyone else anyone else all right seeing none we will move to citizen comments this is an opportunity for citizens to uh, speak come to speak to the board they have three minutes and it is usually a one-way conversation um, I have actually asked uh, mr. Addy who is running our um, Facebook live stream over there to see if there are any comments that that need to be made or that can be made at some point in time during this because we have limited the audience. So Mr. Turner, please come forward um, and we'll go, go past that other here in a few minutes. Good evening, me and boy, my name is Al Alvin Turner Ward, seven um, to, the, to the mayor, to the police chief, to the fire chief, to the NACP president, Yolanda Haddix, and uh, NACP re le legal redress. Um, the er early part of the week, Latin, I, I got this in, in the mail and I uh, looked it over, then I shared it with the mayor uh, what, what need what you need to know about the disease and um, are, uh, the symptoms and everything in, in to, to, to kind of keep people from panicking. Uh, I shared with the mayor that maybe we need to get this out and then people can read it and that'll help them uh, out. Um, also, um, uh, in my land, in my lease that I signed, our, um, we cannot have our utilities cut off at any time. And uh, in the coming days, in the days ahead, our, uh, we would like to try and uh, 
get our bill on time to where that we won't run the risk of uh, the lease that we signed, um, that uh, utilities cannot be cut off. I mean that um, if we get all our bills and then we, we don't know what the electric bill is, that, that put us in jeopardy and uh, it stresses people out. Um, and so, uh, uh, one more, let one more thing, two, two, two more things that have come to my condition, to my consideration, and that is, uh, we, we're getting in time of year that uh, pr uh, pretty soon snakes be crawling. And on these side streets and stuff, we need to watch them real close. Uh, because in May, uh, snakes will run you. Um, but on the side streets, like we need to pay it real close attention. And in the coming month, uh, back to the electric department, um, we need to uh, find out how we do this. Will we do it uh, by the winter or uh, how we would do it? Because, again, I say that our, uh, in our lease, Latin, we cannot run the risk of our uh, you tell you can cut off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else? Anyone else? Do we have any comments, uh, Mr. Addy, that would be citizen comments? Yeah, well, first, it's asked about any updates on the schools. Okay. Um, that was a, a request about updates on the schools. And uh, as of right now, apparently they're just having a school board meeting tonight, and I have no idea what exactly they're they're taking up um but i'm sure we will be finding out because they're very good about putting out information so hold my carver and also as in the paper but i know that um the school is doing a feeding program that's no charge for kids and it's three dollars and 15 cents for adults i believe it's all temperature controlled uh talked to some administrators and officials today and said it's already um uh, ramping up and it's going to be a good turnout so if anybody you know don't miss a meal obviously in start block to county you don't have to go to the public school system uh, you don't even have to be a child, if I want to understand, but that's a good thing that the schools have done to keep in appliance with their USDA uh, guidelines. And, and Vowels is also providing uh, breakfast to uh, students, I think, who are 12 and under, I believe is the age. Really? Three. Three? Yeah. Uh, Alderman Sister. And, and Vowles is being a tremendous corporate citizen yes, yeah. by, by stepping up and do that. The school system has three pickup locations, which I don't know off the top of my head, but they are also sending the buses out on the bus routes and delivering meals, which I think is just brilliant. Yes. Applaud them for that. And, and during the time when we were talking about this, I got a text from the hospital. They are going to start their drive-through clinics tomorrow and so um, I, they haven't said where the location is, but they are going to, well, wait a minute, um, on Strange Road, the Huxford Clinic at 106 Strange Road is, uh, is being um, uh, set up for a drive-through clinic. So that's the, latest, that's the latest information. So thank goodness for texting and social media. All right, anything, anything further? All right, seeing none, we have no public appearances. We know have no public hearing. The next item on the agenda under Mayor's Business is consideration of the services and facilities plan of the City of Starkville for the pro proposed annexed territory. This is a uh, document that should be, in your, should be in your packet. It was a request. Um, it, is, it is intended for the uh, 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 exhibit for the courts. This is our department heads who have been asked to uh, give their um, educated and professional opinion on what it's going to take to serve the new annex territory so that is that is what generated this and it is something that uh, we will be providing to the court in in our case as it relates to the annexation which is still scheduled for um, court date of June the 15th so um, that's what this is about any questions discussion mr. Latimer do you want to add to any of that no ma'am okay Need move approval. I have a motion for approval from Alderman Sistrunk. Do I have a second? Sorry. I have a second from Alderman Beatty. Further discussion? Seeing none, if you would, answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. I'm sorry. Yay. Yay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. 
Vice Mayor Perkins? Nay. Alderman Vaughn? Nay. All right, by a vote of five to two, motion carries. Thank you. Under board business, we have a resolution. This Mayor is move approval. Thank you. I have a motion from Alderman Little to approve the resolution, which is the, uh, if you recall, um, Mr. Higgins brought this to us. This is for the Trinity project. It is a fee in lieu. It is the final, <clears throat> not the final step. It is the step that allows us to be in um, contention for the for the Trinity project. It is not issuing bonds, but it is in preparation for issuing bonds if and only if we get a fee in lieu project. So, and I should have waited for a second before I said all that. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Beatty. Further discussion? All right, seeing none. All those in favor, answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. <laughs> Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistra. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, by vote six to one, motion carries. All right, um, next item is under planning. This is a request for preliminary plat approval, Clark Grove subdivision phase one. And Dr. Kim, we have, uh, the city planners are um, exercising their uh, essential duties from home, and so they are um, not with us tonight, but Dr. Kim will pre present the um, information related to the plat approval. Uh, this is a request of Jay Bryan of McCarthy Architects on behalf of Stuart Rutledge for preliminary pre approval for subdividing about 17 acre parcel into 39 lots. The proposed subdivision is named Clark Grove Subdivision Phase 1 and it is located in a traditional neighborhood new zoning district at the northeast corner of the intersection of Reed Road and West Side Drive. This is Ward 7, right? Right, Ward 7. Uh, the future phase of the development is located directly to the north of the phase one. The proposed development has a gross density of 2.3 unit per acre uh, with the 36 residential units and uh, three HOA maintained lots, such as HOA clubhouse, volleyball field, and playground. The Proposed open space would be 7.43 acres, which is about 44% of the gross land area. The applicant has, has not identified any adversely of affected parties to the subdivision. All easement has provided on the preliminary plat or proposed road, uh, roadway dedica dedications are shown on the plat. The applicant shall contact the county for a review and approval of the proposed uh, road names. The applicant shall meet the requirements of the electrical service, port of water, and sanitary sewer and utility services. There are no recommended conditions to the request. After discussions at the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, Planning and Zoning meeting on March 10th, a motion was made by Commissioner Gregory to approve preliminary plat 20-03, which was seconded by Commissioner Burdell and received unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Is the applicant here? Okay, would you come up, please? With the social distance from Dr. Kim. <laughs> Thank you. Do y'all have anything you want to add or, or um, provide the board any additional information to what Dr. Kim has said as it relates to the project? We do not. We just thank y'all for uh, hearing this tonight. Uh, I know a lot more important things are going on. But, uh, we appreciate y'all conducting business and moving this forward. Absolutely, all right. Any questions from the board? Yeah. I'm sorry. I want to thank y'all so much. This has been a long project. They've been working hard and dealing with this project along with, with Scott Farmers. And uh, Scott and I went to visit some of the other properties back in um, last year. We went up to, uh, went to, uh, up to uh, New Albany and looked at some of their projects, some of the good projects that they had there. And, and, uh, and I think it's it, it going to be beneficial for the city, going to look well for the city. It's not no things just thrown together. It's not nothing like that there. They are hundred thousand dollars houses that for a single family home that they put in there. And spoke in with Terry and we got something with the electric and the gas. And so I think it's a great project and I appreciate y'all for what all y'all have done to make this project success. A couple of times I thought it 
where was it? And but it still came up. And board, I appreciate y'all giving me all your support to make this area look better and increase the value of that side of town. That sounds like a motion to me, Oliver Bond. Would you <laughs> like to put motion. that in the form of a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Move approval, Mayor. All right, thank you, sir. Do I have a second, second for that? I have a second from Alderman Little. All right, further discussion. I'd just like to, uh, Alderman Little. Alderman Bond, I, I noticed that name on uh, Sir Haver Avenue. I, I like that a lot, and uh, I know that means a whole lot to you. I understand exactly. Okay. Anyone else? One question. Alderman Bates. Does it meet the new stormwater guidelines? Yes, sir. We designed the new guidelines. Okay. Anything further? Anyone? Uh, Alderman Walker, I don't want to forget you in this thing. Are you Are you good? I'm good. All right. Seeing no further discussion, I have a motion and a second. Uh, if you would, please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistra. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, is unanimous. The motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you all again so much. Good to see you again. All right, the next item uh, actually can be removed from the agenda. This item, this is a special event that has been canceled. Um, former Chief Nichols was the uh, proposer, organizer of it, and he has he has canceled it rather than postponing it. So if it comes back, I, I'm not familiar with whether or not he's going to bring it back. But as it stands right now, it is canceled, so we can remove it from the agenda. And I apologize, I had, I had forgotten that um, when we were doing the uh, agenda modification. So. That is removed. Uh, we do still have a special event, the American Cancer Society. Move approval, the, Mayor. All right. I have a motion for approval from Alderman Little. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Carver. Um, and um, as we do this, I would like I would like for that to say that if we are still in a emergency, emergency condition, that we will reserve the right to cancel this event. Agree. You, okay, I add agree. that to your motion. Yes, All right, thank you. Well, and that's a friendly amendment. Yes, sir. And Alderman Little, you're adopting the condition of insurance being provided by May 15th. Yes, of course. Okay. All right, excellent. All right, any further discussion? Okay, uh, please signify um, yay or nay when the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. Alderman Vaughn. Nay. All right. Uh, vote of five to two. Motion carries. All right. Engineering was all on consent. We have a claims docket coming next. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion from Alderman Little. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Carver. Discussion? Hearing none, please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. Alderman Vaughn. Nay. All right. Again, by a vote of uh, five to two, motion carries. Thank you. Um, next item is under, um, what is this under? I'm sorry. I'm being a little slow here. Under human resources. It's request authorization to select Kronos as the city's timekeeping and HR software. Move approval. Second. Uh, Okay, I got a, I got a motion from all, from Alderman Sistrunk, and I missed the second. He was Alderman Little. All right, Alderman Little. Further discussion? I know there was some discussion Friday in the work session about this. Has anything changed since then? No, uh, sir. No. no. Okay. All right. All right, seeing, seeing no further discussion, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Nay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, it is unanimous by a vote of uh, seven to no, oh, six 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 one. One. oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. I missed your I missed your name. It came out sounding like a yay. I, I'm sorry, by a vote of six to one. Again, my apologies. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, second, uh, next item is uh, request authorization to advertise for the- Is it? Alderman Carver has a motion motion second. to approve. I have a second from Alderman Little, I believe. Uh, any discussion? Well, I don't know if this is the proper time. Is this going to be your last board meeting? Yes, it is. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, you know, Park's gone through a transition, I guess, the whole time you've been there. <laughs> and so uh, we kind of <laughs> steered that ship and uh, have done well and have a great reputation going from here out. I wish you the best with Musco lighting. 
say that for you. And uh, I know you'll be successful. I wish you and your family the best in all that you do. You've got a, a, an extensive background in this field, and I think going in the private sector, you'll uh, you'll do well. So, always been a good time working with you as personal as a friend, and then uh, professionally, and, and wish you the best of luck. So, thank you. And that, you. and yes, I was going to say that after the vote, but we do appreciate you because you have taken us to the next level and i think we we now realize what we can do and are moving forward with so we do uh greatly appreciate what you brought to the table and do certainly wish you the very best going forward so thank you mr logan thank you. all right motion in a second if you would please answer yay, yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name alderman carver yay alderman sistra yay alderman little yay alderman walker yay alderman Beatty. yay Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, it is unanimous. So we can do that. We can also, is Mr. Dequilla in the room? There he is. Mr. Dequilla, thank you so much for stepping up um, in this time of interim interim time for us. We appreciate it, and uh, we will advertise, and, and I'm sure you'll be happy to see us get someone to fill that role, but we are very grateful that you would step up for us. So thank you very much. All right. All right. Have a safe drive back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving along, we have uh, under parks, we have consideration of the lowest quote for the roof. Um, this is the roof that is only over the recreation, uh, parks and recreation office and the racquetball courts. So um, do I have a motion? Move approval. Uh, thank you, Mr. Walker. <laughs> do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Little. Uh, discussion. All right. Please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistra. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right. Seven to zero. Oh. Unanimous. The motion carries. Thank you. Next item is consideration of agreement with Perry Weather for a weather station for use at Move the sport. approval. Okay. I have a motion for approval from Alderman Little. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. I missed that. Who was that? Ty. <laughs> Y'all are pointing can, one another. I'm going to go with Alderman Sistrunk on that one. So, uh, further discussion. All right, hearing none, we're going to start at the other end. Uh, please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Carver. Yay. All right, another unanimous vote. Thank you very much. The motion carries. And one item to go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, consideration of rejecting all bids received from the J.L. King Park and Patriots Park restroom facilities and authorization to re-advertise. Move Any approval. I'm oh, sorry. Alderman Vaughn, is that you? Yes. Move approval? Okay. I have a motion from Alderman Vaughn. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Sistra. And let me just give just a little bit of, of uh, information. I spoke with Mr. Luke today, and he said that... Uh, that he considered these bids to be well beyond anything that would be expected and so uh, he's going to let them know that and uh, see if we can't get something that is certainly more rational and reasonable so all right if you would please answer yay or nay as Mayor, said, what were we expecting what ball part range were we expecting to um i thought it was in the uh 175 to 250 range actually or were well, there two of them? One of them was a larger one. Yeah, no, 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 no. Total. Total. Oh, I'm yeah. saying five total. Well, I was thinking, uh, Mr. Logan, would you validate me or else make me make me inaccurate? <laughs> what was the range that we were anticipating? Uh, low end, hoping for 150. <laughs> um, so, uh, but obviously far exceeded that. Contractor um, must have a lot of work. A lot of things went into it being so far above and beyond, but. So much so to basically go back to square one. So. Okay. Does that answer your question, Ms. Clay? No, thank All you. right. Thank you. Anything further? All right. Seeing none, hearing none, uh, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrum. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right. Uh, that is unanimous and it, it is approved we are moving now to um, my notice of a work session which I had somewhere in my hot little hand and, and now no longer have it so I will wing it 
anyway, uh, the the next board meeting will be, or the next meeting will be, oh, we found it, thank you. It will be a work session. Um, it is uh, scheduled for Friday, April the 3rd. It will be at 10 o'clock at Startwell City Hall, located at 110 West Main Street, second floor conference room. The public and media are invited to attend, and this will be posted within the hour at the entrance to City Hall. So um, if you would please place that on your calendar. We will uh, hopefully have something quiet in between now and then. Ten, oh. ten members of the public yeah, are invited to attend. Yeah, ten members will be invited to attend. <laughs> Alderman Carver, I saw your That's what I was going to ask. As it pertains to special call meetings, can they be done the same day as a notification, or can it? Yeah, three hours. Three hours is it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if something critical happens, we can certainly do that. And, and, and we will be, I promise you, we will be monitoring oh, yeah. everything. I don't, I think I I'm, I'm sleeping with the news on, you know, so. Yeah, appreciate it. I thank you for everything uh, Spearhead in this city and Crystal Campanella and the hospital and this community, uh, the town and gown relationship that we have. Uh, it seems to be a lot of communication and that's a great thing. So keep spearheading our side of it and keep us uh, informed on the board with, through email and, and appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. So with that, and I'm going to close on that one because that was very nice. Could I get a motion to um, adjourn, actually? So moved. I have a motion from Alderman Sistrunk to adjourn. I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Little. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying, oops. Oh, roll call. Roll call vote, please. <laughs> if you would, please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistrunk. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins? Yay. Alderman Vaughn? Yay. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, uh, board members.